I'm Caroline CSE. Welcome to the return of Bread to Win for 2022. Coming off the back of our yearling sale previews and another sensational English Australian Easter yearling sale. Coming up, we look back at English Easter, the highlight lots, a returned international buying bench, and all the great theatre. Later, we hear another great story of falling in love with the industry in Arrowfield Studs, the horse who made you love racing. But first, let's hear the latest from the breeding world in Source News, including day two of the championships from Royal Randwick and Fireburn's gorgeous sire Rebel Dane to stand at Witten Studs in season 2022. Ten-time Group 1 winning champion on the track, So You Think, has continually been amongst the top echelon of Australian sires. But Saturday, on day two of the championships at Royal Randwick, he went to another realm. The hugely popular son of High Chaparral now leads the Australian general sires list after his three Group 1 winners in a row increased his sire earnings by $440,000. And with the Adelaide and Brisbane carnivals to come, and his numbers currently in training, there's no reason he can't hang on and take the title at the end of the season. But Knight's Order will lead all the way in the Sydney Cup. Last year's Brisbane Cup winner, the Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott train Knight's Order was dominant in the two-mile Sydney Cup, becoming So You Think's first European-bred Group 1 winner. He's from the Woodman Mayor, Lamanca Lass. Sink it over, down the stands rail, lunges, gets up. Next was the clever steer to the outside from Nash Rewilla for Kerry Parker as rider stakes winner Think It Over recorded his second Group 1 win in the $4 million Queen Elizabeth Stakes. Think It Over's damn personal service is as a Beale half-sister to Universal Prince and Universal Queen who also hailed from the Saddlers Wells line through their sire Scenic. But Nimali is starting to extend clear with the Queen of the Turf and Nimali gets a Group 1 today. And so you think third Group 1 in a row was Nimali in the Queen of the Turf Stakes with the former romance Patient stakes winner perfectly prepared by Matt Smith. Nimalee too is from a Zabil mare design and a granddaughter of Hong Kong Derby winner Elegant Fashion. She was bred by Cressfield and bought by Brett Howard from Milford Thoroughbreds at the English Premier Yearling Sale. And here's a big win in the Australian Oaks for El Patroness for Damien Lane. The fourth group one on the day was the historic ATC Australian Oaks. This year going to another outstanding daughter of Rosemont Studs Cox Plate winner Seamus Award. The son of Snitzel is having a benchmark year, while the Oaks winner El Patroness was co-bred by the trainer of both, Danny O'Brien. She's from the O'Reilly Mayor, Sure You Can, and is the fifth Group 1 winner for Seamus Award. Alaskan God got himself into the clear. He's coming with a hell of a run. The other three-year-old classic on the day was the West Australian Derby, won by the son of playing God, Alaskan God with connections now eyeing off the Melbourne Cup. From the reset mare Lady Alaskan, the gilding was sold by Mungrup Stud to Dan Morton. Widden Stud announced through the week it will be the new home for Rebel Dane, sire of this year's Golden Slipper and sire's produce stakes winner Fireburn. Rebel Dane started his career at Swetnam Stud before moving to Victoria's Glen Eden Stud, but deserves the chance to be visited by some of the best broodmares in the land at Widden in season 2022. It's just a, a marvellous uh, stage we're at now, particularly for people like Louis Mahika and uh, his team that he had in the horse right from the start. Uh, Kenny and I got in uh, halfway through his racing career and um, we sort of took it upon ourselves when he retired to try and find him a good home. But luckily enough, Adam Sangster looked after us and gave us a start down there and um, that's how we got started. But it's been a tough road. Thought so much of the horse that uh, we just had to look after him. And uh, that's where we ended up now with Widden. It really is a hard road to hoe, isn't it? For a lot of people that think, oh, well, this, this horse has won a group one, he'll just he'll just find a home. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. And, and I'll ask you off, off the cuff, how many group ones did he race in? Was it 18 or 19? 20? 25. 25, there 25. we are. 25. So, you look at the horse retiring, he went to start at, at eight years old, he was fit right to the end, won a, a late a group one as well, the Menicato, like it, it's just a story that it shouldn't surprise you as to where we are now, but uh, certainly does. Fireburn's really been a, a wonderful thing and it's great to see Louie and his team race the, the filly and, and doing so well. Hasn't it? And start. I mean what a wonderful historic Aussie colonial sort of farm yes. and it's the perfect fit. Yeah, no, it, it should work really well. and. Uh, the boys will look after him there. They, they, I just walked through their barn on the way down to ours and they're all very happy and fired up. So, yeah, we'll see how they go. Looking at Fireburn's pedigree, the factors that stand out 
include the Dane Hill and Northern Dancer on both sides. And again through Rebel Dane sire California Dane, crossed with the So You Think Mare Mullover, it's another representation of the Saddler's Worlds line crossed with Dane Hill, one of the world's great nicks. Widden Stud is also adding Group 1 winner Portland Sky to its roster in 2022. The son of Deep Field dead heated for first in the 2021 Oakley Plate and his sire stood last year at a fee of $88,000. Portland Sky's fee has been fixed at $25,000 with lifetime breeding rights available. The English Graduate of the Week is Mazu, an English Classic Sale graduate who was successful in the Group 2 Arrowfield Sprint, a race sponsored by the stud standing his illustrious sire, Morris. Mazu is from the Flying Spur Mare Chatelaine and was sold for $180,000 at the English Classic Yearling Sale by breeder Parsons Creek Farm to the Ward Brothers of Triple Crown Syndications. He's a half-brother to Coolmore Stud Stakes winner Headway and is another promising three-year-old for his champion Japanese sire Morris, who also has triple Group 1 winner Hitotsu in flying form this season. So much happening, as always, in the thoroughbred breeding world. Coming up after the break, a full review of a thrilling 2022 English Australian Easter yearling sale. In our Cambridge stud news for this week, their greatest performer in their yellow and black checks, Probabile, has been confirmed to visit their own Al Manzor this season, her first at stud. Cambridge stud produced a beautiful story with Probabile's former trainer, Jamie Richards, farewelling the mare before he heads to Hong Kong to train. One of New Zealand's greatest mares of the modern era, the daughter of Savabil looks a treat, and Al Manzor has in recent times sired the Caraca Millions winner, Dynastic, a race Probabil won before returning to win the three-year-old million and four Group 1s, including the 2020 Epsom Mile. The English Australian Easter Yearling Sale saw the return of sale largely normal, an elite buying bench from Australia and around the world, and a mouthwatering selection of yearlings bound for Group 1 success on the racetrack, and the hopes and expectations of thousands of new owners alive and well for the coming months and years. Congratulations, an incredible result here to surpass the 2008 uh, overall aggregate for English Easter and you know just the team effort that's involved, the great stories, it's, it's a sale you won't forget I'm sure in a long time and neither will many others. No, we've, we've had a fantastic year, I mean it's been wonderful and you know we were expecting to have a really good sale and you know you sort of have some parameters in your own mind that you think you'd like to try and achieve but to be where we are now is really fantastic and a testament to the work that everybody's done right the way through the year. I mean, we talk about being able to differentiate ourselves on the basis of offering a, a high level of service or is the best service. And that's right the way through the year, whether it's, you know, consideration of sale placements, the sales itself, the pre-sale, post-sale, across the board and so forth to culminate in the results that we've had the last two days really very rewarding and you're working on a basis you want to keep the buyers happy obviously by bringing the right horses here but you're looking after the vendors too and it's great that the vendors are looking after inglis as well by bringing these horses arrowfield start of course they are the easter sales ring kings they were by far and away the leading vendor which is wonderful coolmore sedge and high newgate yarraman you know another good sale for vinery so all the elite breeders in australia have really supported the sale well, fundamentally, we go to the vendors every year and ask for the opportunity to sell their best horses or what we think are their best horses or what they think are their best horses and some choose to, some choose not to. So for those who are here, you know, we take great responsibility in trying to achieve the best result we can for them and, you know, I, certainly I feel like over the course of the last two days we've achieved a lot of really fantastic results. You see the emotion through the day. I mean, inevitably, we're working to try and mitigate the number of disappointing results that people have to endure, and unfortunately and inevitably there will be some. But I think you reflect on the last two days and just recognise the fact that it's a tremendous endorsement of the strength of the market here, 
you know, the extent to which people want to participate. And we have any number of buyers to the sale that go home disappointed because you know, they've singled out specific lots or particular lots they want to try and focus on. And unfortunately, you can only ever be one buyer and have had to miss out and they go home disappointed and you know you just you, you want to be able to get those people back again the next time you have a good sale and help them find better horses or more horses well the leading buyers too of course tom magnier and mv and coolmore and you know a lot of those colts going to chris waller kieran ma racing john o'shea john hawks at uh, kiora investing more now of course now they're back as a stallion farm hong kong jockey club so again you know these are the these are the premium trainers the premium bloodstock agents and and from the premium racing jurisdictions the names that you've listed out or uh, recognition of the esteem in which the industry in this part of the world is held. You know, these are major international participants. They can really engage in bloodstock trading or bloodstock purchasing anywhere in the world. They choose to focus their attention at this time of the year on here, and hopefully those horses go on to be really successful for any number of those people. I mean, I think the reason, as we say time and time again, why people like buying here is because it's a sale most likely to produce you a top-class racehorse. It's borne out in the race course year after year, and. You know, hopefully we can reflect on what we've seen over the past two days as being the preface to wonderful racing careers for a lot of these horses and it's exciting really. Well it is all about the horses isn't it too, you talk about the stallions, I am invin invincible, Zoo Star went to another level, Snitzel, I mean Dundeal had a huge sale, the, the new size, the Autumn Sun, Justify, you know, it's such a wonderful range we're so lucky to have here in Australia. There's any number of hugely progressive young stallions amongst that group. You know, Zoo Star was a horse we had a particularly strong feeling about in the spring. You know, this is the best group of mares the horse has covered. He's done an exceptionally good job. Snitzel's a, we almost take Snitzel for granted. He's such a good stallion. Uh, Written Tycoon has arrived at the top table as well. You know, these are fantastic stallions breeding very good looking stock out of excellent mares that people are identifying specifically to breed these horses. And then the outcome is born out in the sale ring and hopefully on the racehorse. At three million dollars. Coolmore boys, thank you Coolmore. Can't believe it, you know, words can't describe the roller coaster of um, being behind the auctioneer there and seeing that horse make three million is just overwhelming really. And the three million dollar top seller from Widden Stud to Coolmore, the great emotion there from Anthony Thompson, Zoo Star, their own stallion and the full brother to their great sunlight. And we had the staff streaming past us hugging and crying and you know the pride of Anthony and Katie Thompson um, you know to sell the full brother to sunlight for three million dollars and top the English Easter sale it meant so much. Cool horse, I mean a really good looking horse, I mean in terms of trying to identify a fast racehorse, he pretty much had everything that I think anyone would look for. He just looked like a rocket. He's a brother to a rocket. And, you know, they're really wonderful people. They do an extraordinary job. You know, you m make a mistake to underestimate the ambition that a guy like Anthony Thompson has and the team around him. And he sets his standards to be the best in this country. I think he's very proud of the history of his farm, and rightly so. They have a wonderful team of people. You know, they've been regenerated by a number of young people being added to that group in the last number of years, and I think it's borne out in the enthusiasm that we see from them at the sale. I think to go and do that at any sale is really incredibly difficult. I don't know if people would ever quite appreciate how hard it is to breed a horse that good, but they've done it and they've been rewarded for it, and it's it's fantastic we had the opportunity to be part of it. And of course, Coolmore started buying not only that colt, but also the Snitzel response, the full brother to Estijab from Arrowfield started to Coolmore. And, and as Tom Magni said, they're there to buy stallions, heading to Chris Waller as well. And, and really good to see Coolmore investing in new stallions. You know, obviously they have their own stallion whole, uh, 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 you know, sort of roster of wonderful stallions, but buying up Snitzels and I Am Invincibles and those sorts of horses, it's great to see. Well, Coolmore being to the forefront of the industry internationally for 50 years I mean uh, John Magner has been a pioneer of the industry he's recognized opportunities before anybody is uh, anybody else has you know they're very broad-minded in their thinking so it's great to see them buying the progeny of different stallions here you know I think they've had a tremendous level of success with this syndicate in particular in buying home affairs you know a number of exciting two-year-olds in this crop and you know I think Home Affairs sets a standard, admittedly a very high standard, but a standard for what they set out to achieve with these Colts and you know, I, I think it would be a brave man to bet against them doing it again with the graduates of this sale. And of course the Snitzel Silence Edition, Arrowfield to Hawks Racing for 2.2 million. They bought Esther Jarb, of course, from Arrowfield who won the, the Golden Slipper, the $1.7 million filly, filly. And you just know that this filly is going to get every chance with, the, with Team Hawks. I mean, you talk about Coolmore being a, or John Magner being a pioneer of the industry. I mean, John Massar is the 
Australian equivalent. I mean, he's been, you know, singularly biggest or the singular biggest asset to the industry here over the last any number of decades. It's extraordinary what he's been able to do and the manner in which he's cultivated families, developed families, uh, you know, encouraged investment in this jurisdiction has been incredible. And you see the fruits of his labor to say like this because just so many well-bred horses, well-credentialed horses, that, you know, the families of which have been strategically developed over time by a variety of different stallions, you know, established horses like Schnitzel and not a single doubt, to progressive young horses like Dundeal and then young horses like Morris and the Autumn Sun. It, it's really extraordinary what he's been able to do and, you know, those good yearlings, whether it was the response or the silence edition, you know, right the way through, I mean, it's just an incredible thing to be able to do what his team has done and they deserve to be well rewarded for it. At two million dollars I sell at this time. Last time I called, at two million dollars, I sell. Two million dollars. Credit to the filly, she's just an absolute professional. Yeah, and a credit to the team. She has our brand on her shoulder. And uh, she always will have, so very proud. And the I Am Invincible Pinocchio filly. Again, this was the great theatre too. Pinocchio, mother of uh, classic legend, a hero, etc. But such a part of Linda and Lawrence Mon's whole life of what they've created at Tyreal Real Stud. Two million dollars to Mitchell Bloodstock. And, you know, it must have been hard. I know Linda was saying right up till the end she was hoping to hang on to that filly. Did you have to have a role in really coaxing and convincing, you know, you're here, it's really important that you do put this filly through the ring? To be fair, Johns and Darcy is a fantastic relationship with Linda and Lawrence, mm -hmm. you know, works very closely with them. The nature of the relationship they have with this filly is, uh, you know, a particularly special relationship. And so Jonathan's been a big part of facilitating the process, so tremendous credit to him because, you know, I think he's recognised the value of that animal to Linda and Lawrence have been very sensitive to that and I think no one will be more satisfied than him than, or to see her go in and be as I think sought after in the manner that she was. I think ultimately that's the main compliment. It's not a case that she just went in and made a big prize. She went in and is admired by everybody in the complex and I think that's you know, ultimately the, tr most, the best compliment you can play to the work that Linda and Lawrence do, Rob on the farm, etc. And I think that's part of the reason why Linda and Lawrence to be so emotional about the whole experience. It's just such a great compliment to be regarded and to the standing that they are now. And I guess overall, just wrapping up, we see, you know, Newgate Farm, they had the I'm Invincible Rude Awakening, $1.7 million to James Harron. But Newgate, you know, Henry Field, we see the energy behind, you know, these, these sort of people in the, in the industry that really stand the whole industry, the English Easter Yearling Sale and everything that's happening in the breeding and racing game here in Australia, just looking ahead in leaps and bounds for the future. Look, Henry Field's going to be fundamentally important to our sport and our industry for as long as he wants to be. Extraordinarily hard-working guy, very smart guy, you know, services his patrons just like in the most incredible fashion. You know, I think I don't think you'd meet anybody who um, who doesn't enjoy business dealings with Henry. They brought a fantastic draft to the sale, the best draft they've ever brought to the sale. Something that we took as a massive compliment because it displayed a level of confidence in us that you know we found rewarding and. For them to be the yearlings they brought to be as well sought after as they were was great. You know, Sir Owen Glenn bred the Rude Awakening filly, she's a pretty special filly. To have the opportunity to offer her in itself was a great compliment. And you know, they had some lovely horses through their draft. They sold really well. And again, their farm has developed this wonderful reputation as sources of top-class racehorses or a source of top-class racehorses. And you know, hopefully um, we're reflecting on these horses as top class racehorses in years to come. You know, there's plenty of time to look ahead at, at what's happening in the future. But, you know, again, as we said, you must be very satisfied. So congratulations, the whole English team on a, on a great result. Yeah, it's great. I mean, we were really, we were a really fantastic group of people. As a group, we do work really hard. I mean, we are very sensitive to the fact that we want to do well. A lot of ambitious people in the group, you know, we're always trying to identify ways in which we can do things better, improve, etc. You know, it's a pleasure to work for a family like the English family, you know, who are really understanding, facilitative, compassionate people and creates a really good environment for people to go about their job. You know, I think we just look forward to getting stuck into the next occasion. We have a lot of big sales through April and May or through the rest of April and May. And again, the objective is always the same. We want to offer people a good service, help people achieve good results. And uh, I think if we can continue doing that, we'll continue to enjoy it.
a truly wonderful sale it was. And good luck to all the buyers and the vendors who all have so much resting on the crop of 2022. Coming up after the break, one of our most popular segments on Bread to Win, Arrowfield Studs, the horse who made you love racing. Well, Carolyn, I won't be alone in declaring it's might and power. Um, and I liked the sport before uh, might and power's Caulfield Cup and being at the track, um, watching him in action, I was in awe and truly fell in love with the game. And it's actually quite a funny story behind it because I was a cheeky teenager at the time <laughs> and they used to have billboards on Danong Road leading up to Caulfield Racecourse where they'd have the previous year's winners and then they'd have the current year, which I think was 97 and a question mark. So my <laughs> friend and I got up in the middle of the night and printed out this huge marble hall sign and stuck it on. Um, anyway, after the race, marble halls ran down the track and this old guy sidled up next to me and said, how good was that? I said, amazing. He said, you back it? I said, no, I actually back marble halls. And he said, well, at least you kept it to yourself, unlike those idiots who stuck the name <laughs> of the horse up on the billboard. So had a good laugh and um, I came home that evening and I just said to myself, like, I, what I saw there was something truly special. Um, and it actually had a um, profound effect on me, more than any other sporting event I've been to. And I think from that point forward, I, uh, I was a goner. And um, yeah, he's certainly inspired me to, uh, to become seriously involved in the industry. Being in the ownership group with, you know, very elegant, incentivised, all these absolute champions. But that must remind you of the thrill of when you first see a horse that grabs you, it hooks you in. Yeah, it's intoxicating. And they set a very high bar, you know, for champions I've been involved with. I always compare them to Might and Power. And I like to think there was something rather Might and Power-esque about incentivised Caulfield Cup win. <laughs> Fortunately, I couldn't be on track and no one could. Um, but there was something certainly that, um, that brought back memories of Might and Power and you know, hopefully he can do what Might and Power did as well, come back the following year uh, and win a Cox Plate, so I'm hoping. Always great to hear from those investing in the racing industry and thanks to Bray Sikowski for sharing his love of the horse on Bread to Win. That's it for this week's show. Don't miss next week's as we show you the behind the scenes story of one of Arrowfield Stud's most important staff members, Adam Shankly, the man who cared for the wonderful Arrowfield breed shapers, Reduce Choice, Schnitzel and more, and prepared not a single doubt, and more recently, the Autumn Sun as yearlings, and welcome them back to Arrowfield as stallions. That's next week. I'm Caroline Searcy. Look forward to seeing you next Monday night on Bread to Win. Thank you.